This is Ralphie the Drinking Bird. I got the first Ralphie that I ever saw when I was oh, maybe seven, eight years old. Um, he was considerably larger in those days. You could get them, they were about this tall, and they were really neat. You can't find those anymore, but you can find a, a small scale Ralphie. The, evidently, the environment has caused them not to be able to grow quite like they used to. This is something I'd have set out on the desk in my classroom uh, early in the year. Have it bouncing back up and down. It's something for the kids to, to watch. If they don't want to listen to me, they can sit there and watch Ralphie the drinking bird or dunking bird bounce back and forth. And you'll see kids wobbling in the classroom. And that's kind of neat because you know they're paying attention to something at least. <laughs> Some time ago, it occurred to me that we, as teachers, make a big mistake. And that mistake is that we assume our students will not read the textbook. And I cannot tell you how many times I have sat with a group of teachers and everybody sits around and goes, nobody reads the book. It's a waste of time to have a book because they'll never pick it up and they'll never look in it. And I was in that group. And I don't know when it happened, but at some point in time, it dawned on me, we never gave them a reason to read the book, because we told them everything. We assumed they wouldn't read it, so we came in and did all the work for them. And the teachers that I worked with and I, we sat around and we started thinking about this, and we started looking for ways to get our students to read the book. And what the revelation we had was maybe we need to create units that have some sort of event that takes place at the beginning of the unit and then tell our students, okay, the answer to this question is in chapter 23 in your textbook. Go in there and find it out. This was the first one of those units that we put together. And Ralphie the Dunking Bird became an entire unit. It became the unit in our textbook on liquids and vapor pressure. And we started the unit by handing out to every lab pair a Ralphie inside the box with instructions on how to set it up and get it going. We gave it to the students. We told them to go back and play with it for a little while. After they played with it, then we gave them a series of small labs and a bunch of instructions and said, this unit in your textbook involves your explaining in terms of the little labs that we've given you and in terms of the material that's in your textbook, why Ralphie drinks. And you have to explain it in terms of the observations that you're gonna make in the mini labs and what you've read in your textbook. The test over this unit is the paper you turn in for Ralphie. It, it turned out to be one of the most frustrating things that our students ever did and one of the most rewarding things they ever did. And Ralphie became a hero within our school um, to the point of where people from other classes came to the room to see who Ralphie was because they heard people saying Ralphie with various adjectives associated with his name. Um, <laughs> And so what I want to do is take a little bit of time to, to show you some of the things we, we did with that. You'll find with the write-ups that come with this, with the PDFs that come with Ralphie in this demonstration, that you'll have all the instructions. There's even a rubric in there. Um, and you'll get to see specific student instructions there. Here I'm just going to quickly demonstrate some of the things that we add the students to. Um, one of the first things we did in the little experiments was we said, we want you to take a look at what happens when you put three different liquids on a microscope, microscope slide and just observe them? And we told them to use acetone, ethanol, and water. And so I'm just going to get a drop of acetone, put it in this pipette, a drop of ethanol in this pipette. And just to make it really authentic, water from Ralphie's bowl in this pipette. And I will set these guys a 
Um, okay, set these guys here and I'm going to put a drop down. Acetone, ethanol, and water. And then we just had them watch it. <laughs> Nothing better than having a kid watch water evaporate. Um, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it, but there is a difference in rates of evaporation. They can see that the acetone is almost gone. The ethanol is still there. Water's not done much of anything. Water also has a nice surface tension, and it's kind of a nice bead on the drop. All right, that was the first step. Then the second step was to ask them to do this, but then we would have them turn the hot plate on at a very low setting and do the same thing. Again, as you would guess, what they're seeing at this point in time now is, hey, temperature has some influence on the rate at which things evaporate. Okay, so I'm going to pull that out. And then the next thing we had them look at was just a regular thermometer. Now, we like to use these sorts of thermometers. Um, the digital ones are fine if you've got them, but you may have a, some of these around that, that are but I assume these are alcohol or something like that. And we asked them then to just take a drop of liquid and put it on the end of the thermometer. Now, what I want you to look at in the camera set and the thing we had our students look at was just what happens when I moisten the end of this thermometer. And so we'll look at the uh, alcohol or the red liquid in here, whatever it happens to be, after it's been moistened a little bit and see what happens there. And watch the liquid. And I think, yeah, I know I can see it, so you must be able to. It's moved down. We've taken those same liquids before, and they observed that they evaporated. Now what we've seen is that when they evaporate, there's a temperature change associated with it. That's kind of neat. So we'll pull that out of the way, and I'll get this out of the way. The next thing we gave them was another toy. And this, um, it's warm in here. And so I think you probably just saw what I did over there. I cooled off the bottom of this because the liquid was up. Uh, your classroom won't be as warm. But I don't think you'll probably have lights like this in your classroom. But this is, this is called the love meter. Uh, it tests whether or not you have the power of love in you. Um, there's a really interesting thing on the box now. The new ones say the water moves up with your love, which in itself is kind of interesting because I think you could do a whole other study on this liquid, and I think you'd probably come to the conclusion that it's not water. We'll find out if, in fact, I have any love associated with me. I'm warming my hands up for a reason. Uh, the temperature in here is a little bit. I wouldn't tell my students to do that, by the way, but I want it to actually work for me because I don't want you to think I have no love. But you can see what's happened. Put my hand on the bottom. Liquid's gone up to the top. That's what the instructions tell us to do. We can take this. And I'm going to take it back over. I'm going to bring my cold water in again. I wouldn't have the students do this, but I'm doing this for the sake of our demonstration here. Put in the cold water. It runs back down pretty fast. And now I want to take a look at a slightly different approach with this thing. I'm going to set it on the tabletop. And instead of putting my hand underneath it, this is one of their little experiments that they do with it. Tell them to put a piece of Kleenex or paper towel or something like that over the top, something that's liquid absorbent. I have no clue which liquid this is. It doesn't really make any difference. But I'm going to moisten this with the students. We tell them to use water. But I'll let that go down over the top. And hopefully, when I get it moist, I think we're starting to see it. Hopefully, this is in a spot where you guys can get it. Notice what's happening. See the liquid down on the bottom? It's starting to move up, just like it did in my hand. I'm not holding it this time, though. Instead, there's something going on here that's drawing the liquid up or pushing the liquid up in there related to the fact that I've moistened this little piece of toweling that I've set over the top. I'll throw a little more, more moist liquid on it. And we can see that, yeah, it goes up on its own. Another experiment we have them do. 
another thing that they can draw a conclusion from. That's, that in itself is really cool. And you might be looking at this thing and come back to Ralphie over here. And by the way, then, if I take this off and let it sit for a little while, I don't know how long this will take because the top's probably got some liquid on it, but we may see in a relatively short period of time that it starts working its way back down. I'm not going to get concerned with that. One of the things in the instructions for Ralphie is he's got felt on his head. This is very much like what's going on there. And in the instructions it says to get Ralphie to begin drinking, you have to dunk his head in the water. Conclusions are starting to be built here on what they can explain. Now remember, they're also reading their textbook at this point in time. And they're reading about vapor pressure, and they're reading about heat evaporization, and they're reading about what happens when liquids evaporate and condense. So all of that stuff is being added into what they're learning about because they have to explain why Ralphie continues to drink. Now there's another experiment we have them do that adds an entirely different level to this. And that involves putting Ralphie inside an environment. I'm going to use this big bell jar. Uh, actually, the incredible thing is that Flynn sells a terrarium that Ralphie fits in perfectly. <laughs> that works for a great environment, a little plastic one. But I've got this big bell jar here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to wait a little bit and see what happens to Ralphie if we put him inside the jar. Now, when I ask my students what's going to happen with this, most of them at this point in time, come back and go, well, he's going to die because he can't breathe. And um, in fact, I suspect in a relatively short period of time, we will see Ralphie, who has been drinking vigorously the whole time we've been here, stop drinking. My goodness, is this all we really need to do to keep Ralphie on the straight and narrow? <laughs> Put him inside a jar. Ralphie has stopped. I wonder what would happen if we open up the container and give Ralphie some air. Isn't that astonishing? Ralphie drinks again. There's another part in Ralphie that you have to explain. And that is why Ralphie stops drinking inside the environment. And most of you know about vapor pressure equilibrium. And <laughs> Ralphie goes inside there, and very quickly the humidity inside the container reaches saturation, 100%, whatever you want to say. And that's what controls Ralphie's drinking. Th that is the key, really, to the whole thing. All of the rest of the stuff hinges on that last little experiment. For those of you that are looking at this and going, um, huh, why does he drink? I will admit that when I first saw Ralphie, I had no clue why he drank. Uh, I thought maybe he was thirsty. Um, but what's going on here is if you look at it closely, his head's wet. There's a liquid down in the bottom just like the love meter. And slowly but surely that liquid moves up. His head starts to fill. The center of mass changes as his head gets heavier. He falls forward into the water. And when he falls forward, you can see a bubble moves through. Some of the liquid falls back down, and he goes back up. Now, what actually is doing it? Two things, really. One is gravity. There's no question about that. Ralphie's got a center of mass, and when, his, when the center of mass changes, Ralphie falls over. But what actually makes it work is the fact that his head, as it rocks back and forth, water evaporates from the surface of the head. That water evaporates and causes the temperature in Ralphie's head to go down. When the temperature goes down in his head, the pressure in his head goes down. The pressure on the bottom is the same as it was before because we haven't cooled Ralphie's rear. 
If we stick Ralphie's rear in a bucket of ice, Ralphie will stop again. But if we don't cool Ralphie's rear end, there's more pressure on the bottom. That higher pressure on the bottom pushes the liquid up into the head. The head gets heavier, Ralphie falls over. When he gets to this position right here, hey, an air bubble just went up. Ralphie's head now is the same pressure as his base. As long as there's a little bit of a slant here, then that means the rest of the liquid's gonna fall back down and Ralphie goes back. Now he's swinging back and forth. He's actually fanning himself, sort of, increasing the evaporation there due to surface area primarily. And liquid goes back up and Ralphie continues. Ralphie will continue to drink until he dries out, which really means until he runs out of water. Um, this was the first of a whole collection of, I hate to use the word problem-based learning because it really isn't problem-based learning, but it's close. A whole collection of guided problem-based learning activities that we started putting together. And what we accomplished more than anything else with this was we taught our students that they could go to their textbook and find answers and use those answers to explain common things that, they, that they'd seen around them. That there was more to the vapor pressure equilibrium, there was more to rates of evaporation, there was more to a love meter and Ralphie the drinking bird than just, oh, that's cool, or oh God, I gotta memorize that. And if you start doing stuff like this in your classroom, it's really a neat thing to do, and you can't beat it. Um, the one other caution I'll give you, don't start your students with Ralphie the Drinking Bird and give it to them and you've never done anything like that before. This is something you build into with many steps. You don't come in one day and give them something they've never seen before and make it a gigantic unit. Give them small inquiry activities, just little things that they have to work with and only take a few minutes to deal with or maybe one place in the textbook and build into that. Ralphie doesn't take place until second semester. If we drop that on them on the first day of school, I'd probably be alone on the, th well, uh, usually I, they don't let anybody drop for the first week. But after the first week, I'd probably be alone in my classroom. Not a bad concept, really. 